Well, welcome everybody. Welcome to our free online self uh, global self awakening workshop. So we're just going to hang out together for a few minutes in silence to uh, set the tone. And then it gives everybody else a chance to jump on board and then we're going to get going. So relax into this moment. Just hang out with yourself. Take a deep breath and bring your attention to your own center. Our attention, basically, most of the time is focused is on our thoughts, our emotions, or the utter world. Whatever activities is happening in our surroundings, it takes our attention away. We barely spend time putting our attention on the center, our, ourselves, where it's nice and quiet. So that's what we're going to do right now. Just simply, without trying to get to anywhere, without a goal, any distractions, any kind of agenda, we're simply hanging out here and now by ourselves. Yet we're collectively connected. But the first few moments what we do is simply being here and hanging out with this one, the heart of awareness. our own being, the state of presence. We're practicing our very true nature. Before we were conditioned to become something else, few hundred years ago or a thousand years ago you would simply spend time by yourself without any kind of distractions and that's what we're going to learn we're going to undo what civilization has done to us and come to our own natural state simply being here now without an agenda. Hanging out with our own divine self, the holy self, here and now. Something that, because we've been conditioned, we may find it very difficult to do, simply being here and not be engaged with anything yet. Immersing ourselves in our natural state. And what happens, you begin to experience the presence, Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, which is your very pulse. Every breath you take, it's coming from here. You don't have to force yourself to breathe. You don't have to be conscious about breathing. It's a natural state that happens. You don't think about how many times you've been breathing throughout the day. 
unless you're doing some specific breath work but on a normal basis you don't pay any attention on your breathing unless you have some physical problems so it's a natural state the body breathes same thing with naturally spending time in here and now being here in this moment without any kind of agendas without trying to get to anywhere to prove anything to gain anything or to lose anything you're simply here right now and in being here in this moment spending time with yourself in a way being suspended in the air suspended in the space sort of lost at last aimlessly like a particle that is suspended in the air you will begin to experience a very interesting thing getting a good glimpse or a glimpse of yourself the divine presence which is already here something you don't have to do anything to get to but in fact it's in the lack of doing you may find it very difficult because the mind has been conditioned throughout all these years from your childhood even through past lives that you always have to do something but for this you don't have to do anything because it's already built in simply being here and in here you begin to experience a phenomena that's been with you all of your life and it's been waiting to be discovered your power your natural state just hang out in this moment and you are hanging out with the presence the, the divine presence And you can feel the presence when you're quiet and you become still you will discover that a giant lives within you surrounding you dancing around you playing around you is kissing you and it's your own breath it's your pulse it's your heart and this giant which is your power source is pure love it's the divine present which is here right now and when you become quiet you become still you give it an opportunity to recognize your own self and you're cutting through the blah 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 
So welcome to our Global Self-Awakening Workshop. Uh, those of you who are here with me for the first time, I'm not able to respond to you on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. Only through our system Zoom that you can sign up through our website, zaratustra.tv. Uh, I can um, respond to you. You can write to me on the chat box and then uh, I, will, I can unmute you and we can talk and you can ask me your questions. Um, this is our first uh, day. Uh, we will be here tomorrow as well, same time on uh, Wednesday and Thursday, this coming Wednesday, Thursday, as well as next weekend, which is on uh, Saturday and Sunday. The purpose of this workshop is to help you bring your attention towards recognizing that you are already a divine being and helping you to drop your conditioning on the way to recognition that you are one with all and there is no separation and there is really no boogeyman basically is what I want to help you to realize is that which you're looking for is already here within yourself the recognition of the truth of who you are and in a layman's uh, language, the truth of who you are is you are God. God is within you. It surrounds you. It's never been separated. And it will never be separated. And it's not something that you need to get to or gain. It's something you recognize within yourself. It's a recognition of a space, of a state of presence which is already here, already in this very moment, is to recognize that. That's what self-realization is, self-awakening, to awaken to the truth of who you are versus a false identity that were the majority of people on the planet are under this hypnosis of a false identity of really be believing that they're separated they're human beings they're entities individual entities separated from the soul from the source you know, we've heard this many times here and there. We've read many different books, a lot of terminologies, a lot of different kind of workshops, but we do hear it that we're all one. But it's very, very difficult to comprehend this in the soul level and operate from this place when your experience is not oneness when your experience is separation and you operate from this place of fear, worry, anxiety and all kinds of different emotions that take over you. So we may say it as I have been there and I've done that myself that it's all one, we're all one, blah 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 but then you're not experiencing it on daily basis that that's not your every moment reality so then it becomes kind of like trying to convince ourselves of something that we're not experiencing and it doesn't work it doesn't take you anywhere so the key is to recognizing it and living it in every moment and in this shift as this is happening as we're getting closer to this self-realization 
things begin to change. A lot of different things begin to appear and disappear. Different people disappear in your life or appear in your life. Circumstances start to change. Your reality begins to change. And you have to let go throughout this changes of a way of thinking and a way of being that you're accustomed to. And that is going to have to go. Especially spiritual conditioning. Spiritual conditioning is very dangerous. Is is a very dangerous conditioning. And we always do see conditionings of whether it's religious or different kind of groups or it's cults or it's a social conditioning, it's a political conditioning or it's a national conditioning and sometimes we pop out of our box and we begin to see it and it's easy to point out to other people and other groups. But it's very, very difficult to see our own conditioning and, and A, seeing it, B, admitting it. Majority of us are in denial and we keep denying things. And you may think like, okay, I'm spiritual, I'm going towards God, but then you're hanging out to a lot of old stuff and not willing to let go of them. On this path to God-realization and self-realization, you basically, ultimately, have to get naked completely, to be admitted, to be humble enough in the eyes of Her Majesty, the Supreme Being. You're going to have to let go of everything and get to this point that you don't know anything, nothing, zero, when you come face to face to the Supreme with humili humility, being humble and being at this place that I don't know anything. And then transformation begin to take place and the wisdom comes through, comes in and takes over. In a more modern language, it's that we work on raising our vibrations to a higher frequency. But how can you raise your vibrations to a higher frequency? Number one is when you're vibrating in the third dimensional frequency, as most of us do, then you do experience separation. You do experience that there are others. There are other things. There's disease. There's um, terrorism. There, there's opposition groups. There are entities out there that they're to get you to destroy your being destroy your sense of livelihood but as you awaken as you raise your vibrations to a higher frequency what happens is your vibration brings you to a different frequency that you're merging into the oneness. And in this shift, what happens, you begin to see. Your vision changes. And you begin to see that there is no separation. That you're actually one with the terrorism, with the terrorist, you're one with the disease. You're one with the poverty. You're one with Jesus, with the Christ consciousness, with the Buddha's consciousness. 
you begin to see that you're one with all of it. All of it is in you and you are in all of it. So if you hate something, you begin to see that you are that thing. If you're afraid of something, you begin to see that you are that thing. And it's all part of yourself. And in this emergence, in this recognition, slowly what happens that your fears and worries begin to dissipate and disappear. It's a process. It's not for very, very small percentage of people around the world. Maybe it happens instantly. So as Robert Anton Wilson in Prometheus Rising in his book says that it's a brain change. It's a shift in the brain and it's a rapid brain change. Some people may be putting it that way. It's a transformation. It's a transformation from the head to the heart. It's a journey that you transform, you transition from analytical thinking, from a world of the mind that's constructed by, through thoughts, you shifting to the world of the heart. is a different kind of knowing. This one is the knowing of the mind, which is not a direct experience. And this one is the knowing of the heart, which comes from direct experience. Now, this is not something that you read and you memorize and you begin to practice. It doesn't work that way. For majority of us on this life that we have come to this life for whatever reason, and we don't need to get into that right now, but you want to do some checking with yourself. A, you are here. You're here because you don't have a choice to be anywhere else. So you're here. You are in this life. You're in this body. You were born in this family, whatever family you were born in. You were born in this color of skin. You were born in this religious background. You are born with your nationality. Wherever you've landed and wherever you are, that's where you are. You can't be anywhere else and you can't be anything else or anyone else. You definitely can't be anyone else because everybody else is already taken. So you want to get used to being yourself and wherever you're at. So let's get this thing straight. And admit it and accept it so you don't have to struggle with very basic things, which a lot of people do, and especially in pseudo-spirituality. So much confusion is here. So much. So many of you are so confused in your, on your spiritual path. Let me just make a few things very clear for you so it makes it easier. And you can see for yourself, check in with your own heart if this is something you want to continue listening to and following and incorporating into it. So let's take one thing out of the equation and right very, very the beginning of this workshop. A. You don't have a choice. Choice does not exist because there is no free will. Free will does not exist. It's a hoax. It's, it's just an optical illusion. It appears to be there. It appears as a part of your path, 
but it's non-existing. Whatever, whatever decision you make and whichever direction you go is already written. It's where you're supposed to go and what you're supposed to do. And I'm going to tell you why you don't have a choice, because there is no free will. It's non-existing. Is because there is no individual entity. There is no one single person separated from totality. It just doesn't exist. You, as a single person, as an individual, separated from the whole, doesn't exist. It's non-existing. It's only an imagination. It's happening in the realm of the mind. The mind is projecting it, that there is such a thing, that you are an individual, separated from everything else, and you can choose what to do. And that doesn't exist. It's non-existing. It's not even there. It's pure illusion. So at this point you want to see if this teaching is for you or not. Because your mind or you may come and think like, you know what, this is completely bullshit. And this is not for me. It's a very good time to exit and move on because I'm about to rock your world. My mission is not to support your illusion, to keep you in a state of sleep by giving you a few different techniques to do this and to do that. So you're happy with me. My mission is to wake you up completely especially of what is going to come next on this planet, where it's going to, is to wake up to a house which is burning down and its roof is about to fall down and you're sleeping, you're in your bed, you're in a deep sleep and you're dreaming of something and Papa, Mama comes and wake you up. Wake up, wake up. And of course you're in this deep sleep and you don't want to wake up because you're walking on a beach with your sweetheart hand in hand and you're loving that sleep, that dream. But the ceiling on your house is about to fall down and you're going to get burned and killed or badly burned. So your parents there, they're trying to wake you up to get you out of the house before the house burned down. And that's what I'm doing right now. Trying to wake you up to an illusion that you were brought up to all of your life. And you're dearly hanging on to it and supporting it. Some people get very angry about this. They get... They, because their prejudice is being insulted to the point that they can get violent. They may just pick up a shotgun and shoot me or beat me in my head because I'm telling something that they absolutely don't want to hear and it's very much opposite of their complete belief system because no one has ever told them that. majority of us have never heard this, that there is absolutely no free will. No free will for the individual because there is no individual. There is no individual entity separated from the source, capable of doing its own thing. Everything is a part of the source. Everything is a part of the totality. Everything is God. Everything is a, an expression of the Absolute. Everything. Every one of us is an expression of the Absolute. 
You are an expression of God. This is how God is expressing itself through you, whether you like it or you don't like it. It doesn't matter what you like or don't like. You don't have a choice in liking it. That's how it is. This is how God wants to express itself. You. And in that recognition, as you surrender to it, you begin to understand it and see it, a number of different things begin to happen because gratitude takes place. Surrendering to what is, acceptance of what is, and the recognition that your flaws as well as everything that you like about yourself, these are exactly designed to be this way. This is God's will. This is God's expression. You are that. And what happens is as you drop your resistance, as the shift happens, as you surrender to this new way of understanding and thinking, is you begin to accept yourself the way you are and begin to love yourself as you are. And this is something that majority of people on the planet are struggling on daily basis. We don't accept ourselves and we don't love ourselves. That's number one that we're really struggling with across, across the planet. So this self-hate, hatred, and lack of self-love rules us all of our lives. And all of our lives we're striving to change ourselves to something else. Sometimes we can, but a lot of times we can't. And through that, there's a lot of hate and anger and frustration follows through. And then you end up living a whole life. And then at the end, we die. And we never accomplished one simple thing. To love and accept ourselves. Fully, the way we are. In this moment. Look at yourself and look at your mind. And pay attention to yourself. Look at your way of you think. If you really want to get to the bottom of everything, you have to do self-observation. You have to listen and pay attention to your thinking pattern and see how your thinking pattern, how destructive it is and what it does to you on a daily basis. That is haunting you. That you're a slave and being haunted. And one day you may decide that you want to break through this jail and no longer be a slave. And I'll be waiting for you here. To help you become free. But you have to make that decision. And for that you have to pay a price. You're going to have to let go of everything you know. Because everything, all this stuff that you know is not doing anything for you. It's keeping you in the bondage. It's keeping you in slavery. That's why you suffer. If you suffer, then know that you're stuck. You're hanging on to ideas and an illusion which is not real. I like to share a quote for, uh, with you from a very, one of the very, very first spiritual books I have ever read. And this is a long, long time ago when I first was invited and I brought on this path. My old friend, my brother Ernie, who 
happened to be my spiritual teacher for the for a long time this is back in the day long time ago gave me this book from Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh aka Osho I think the title of the book was the way of the heart or the path of the heart I don't quite remember the title of the book but I do remember this and this is in my early days and I'm a baby and I don't know very much about any of these things so everything's very new and I'm very excited and I'm like a lot of you playing with crystals and tarot cards and seeing psychics or channelers and poking my nose into different kind of uh, teachings and checking out Buddhism and Hinduism and Sufism and all these different things I'm just trying to figure out what's what doing a little bit of this doing a little bit of that blah 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 and I open this book and I look at the first page I open it up and in the first page it says I am all there is beautiful I am all there is ugly I am total I am all there is beautiful I am all there is ugly I am total and in that very moment I experienced that if somebody punched me right on my third eye like boom and I didn't even know what third eye was and I remember I was standing behind me was my bed I was in my bedroom and I was standing with my back towards my bedroom and I opened this book I read this sentence on the first page and I get hit in my third eye Poof! and I just fell down I fell down backwards in the bed and I was gone I don't know how long it took I went into this deep state of Samadhi or coma I can't even explain it but I felt like somebody punched me right in my third eye and I was gone I am all there is beautiful I am all there is ugly I am total and that was written by Osho what do you mean I am all there is beautiful and I am all there is ugly it took me another God knows how many years being on this path to recognize that 30 years after now I realize that that I am all there is beautiful and I am all there is ugly they're all within myself I have my light and I have my dark as I am sitting here with you in this moment because I am one with everything coming to oneness to self-realization to God realization means you are the expression of the absolute God expresses itself in this dimension and every moment and God may come as a terrorist as a rapist may come as Mother Teresa as a saint as a great healer may come as Adolf Hitler killing six billion people or more or may come as Dalai Lama it will come as different characters simultaneously the good the bad and the ugly it's all God 
There is no separation. So as you let go of your spiritual ideas and conditioning, and you start to see that you are that, and in this emergence of consciousness, in this recognition of that, you also begin to lose the sense of an individual that is separated from the source into the divine consciousness, into the recognition that it is the totality, the entire existence is operating through you. So this idea that I am a person capable of doing my own thing, I have my own free will, which is by the mind, is very frightening to let go of it. It's extremely frightening. What do you mean? To let go of the control and pay attention what kind of control freak you are. Pay attention to that. Look at it. Go back in your life. That how much you need to be in control of everything. How much you're really trying to control things all the time and manipulate things. And a lot of that manipulation and control is falling under this spiritual persona. How peaceful you are and you got all the right stuff. You're wearing white and you got the feathers and you're having your crystal and you have your mala and you go to yoga and you're vegan and you're vegetarian and you're so spiritual. But look under it and see how controlling you are how much you're trying to manipulate things. How many courses have you taken in order to manifest your soulmate? How many psychics you've spoken to to see when is he or she is appearing? That's control, trying to manipulate things. How many courses and pra classes and practices of self-empowerments I will be taking and partaking in order to be able to manipulate things, manifesting things. All these classes about manifesting things is what? So I can control universe to get what I want because I have my own free will. And look where it's leading you to. Look where we're at right now. On the world about to collapse, On a planet which is going, it's doomed. It's going downhill. A system which is broken and it's going to hell. So do you want to stay in that boat or you want to jump out of it? What do you want to do? You want to go downhill with this baby because it's not working. It's very obvious. And we're going to see the second pandemic wave is going to come and it's going to get worse. Do you want to be a part of that? Or are you ready to wake up because you are in a nightmare? The house is in fire and it's falling apart. Do you want to jump out of it or you just want to hang in there and try to fix it? And in order to get out of that, you have to let go. You can hang on to the Tesla. You can hang on to your stocks, your few homes around the world, all of your friends, trying to keep everything the way you want, and also go to full self-realization. You're going to have to let go of your ideas, baby. That's how it is. The only person who is going to suffer is you. 
and those like-minded ones who are supporting the collective idea of separation. And that's, those are the ones who suffer, trying to hang on to something which is not real, because you're not real. Your idea of who you think you are is not real, doesn't exist. It's an optical illusion. It's illusory. Because you think you're separated and you can change something in the world that is also made out of illusion. Forget about the world. Trying to fix the world. It doesn't need your help. There's nothing you can do about it. You weren't, you, you're not the one who created it. Let the Creator deal with creation. That which has been here before you were born, thousands of thousands of years before you and I were born, and that which is going to be here years and years after you and I die. Let that one deal with this world. It's not your job or my job. Trying to change the world. And look what a mess we got into. It's worse than ever before. Because this world is a representation of a busy mind, of a collective, busy, sick, diseased mind, which has ADD. It can barely be present. And it's all over all the time. It's running so fast. Why do you think... Have you ever wondered why events in the world are accelerated? Why everything's so fast? And time's going by really fast. Have you ever thought about that? And most people say, well, as you get older, things go much faster. It's not necessarily because you're getting older. It's because the collective mind it's getting very busy. Hundred years ago, you would, in order to exchange information, you would go to the center of the town. Most towns, especially not in the U.S., because now the center of the town, most centers of the town are replaced by a shopping mall. But in Europe, in, in all over the world except the U.S., uh, we have it in a few cities in the U.S., but not everywhere. Every town, every village has a center of the town. And people would go to the center of the town. They would take their goat, they would take their cheese, their milk, whatever they had to bargain with. And people would go to the center of the town and they would exchange and bargain for something they, they needed. And also they would exchange information. So you would go there and that was like the newsstand. And you would tell somebody about what is happening 20 miles, 5 miles, 10 miles, or 20 kilometers away in the next village or another place. So information was not traveling so fast. It was very slow. And if you lived in somewhere in Sweden, you lived in Stockholm, you didn't know what was going on in South Africa. You didn't have access to that kind of information. It would take months before you get some information about even another city or another country or what is going on in London. That information was an instant, so it would take time before it comes to you. So as technology got more advanced, our human mind also got more sophisticated. So then the technology made the news available. 
And now today it's instant. It's instant news. Whether it's real or it's not, that's a, that's a different story. We're not going to get into that. But you get the news instantly. And the reason is that there is a lot of el electromagnetic waves traveling in, in the air. So the electromagnetic waves disturbing your brain wave patterns. So it's hard to concentrate because there's so much information is going through constantly. You're getting bombarded by this information. So everything's fast. Everything has accelerated because the human mind is speeded up. So things appear to be going really fast because the mind has become very sophisticated and complicated and complex. So much information being processed through it simultaneously. For example, you drive your car, you're talking on your phone, you have music going on, and maybe you have your kid back there, and he, she is crying, or the dog is barking, but yet you somehow manage all of it on a daily basis. You can operate on the phone, driving a car, talking on a phone, or texting, you're not supposed to do it, but you do it. And you're operating all these different things simultaneously. You couldn't do that 50 years ago. Your brain, your mind was not sophisticated enough, was not, wasn't trained enough to be able to handle so many different things simultaneously. But today you can. So back to my very point, because this is our first session, so I'm just trying to get to the point and explaining what is, what's the goal of this self-awakening workshop, what am I trying to relate to you, what am I trying to tell you, what's the target. is that there is no separation because there is no individual entity separated. There is no me. There is no Zarathustra separated. Amir, um, our Instagram ended. No. Hold on. Yeah. So... There is no individual entity. I'm going to say it again one more time. I want you to pay attention. There is no individual entity. There is no individual entity, does not exist, separated from totality. Means you as an individual do not exist. You never were existing. It's an optical illusion. One moment, please. Hold on a second. Just one second. I'm going to say it again one more time. Pay attention, please. You, as an individual entity, as a single person, separated from everything else, does not exist. It never existed. It's an optical illusion. It looks like it. It appears to be that way. It feels that way. The senses are telling you that's what it is, but it's non-existing. It just does not exist. And your mind wants to go crazy. What do you mean I don't exist? What do you mean I'm not... Da, 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 da. I don't have my free will. Well, I just decided to pick up this glass of water and drink. 
and I just decide to go out there and buy a cup of coffee. And I do this and I do that. But pay attention that how many times in your life you're deciding to go this direction and you end up being here. How many of you wanted to be, I don't know, a dentist, you wanted to be an engineer, you wanted to be a free-spirited and go travel around the world, and you ended up being a mom with three kids in your hometown. How many of you really wanted to go and be something else in your life, and you ended up somewhere else, and you feel stuck? And after three kids, 30 years after, you lost your dream and you look back at it and you really regret it. How many times you made mistakes? How many bad investments you made? How many bad relationships you got into and they dragged you down? How many times you tried to lose weight and you couldn't? How many times you tried to go to the to get into a good exercise pattern or f eating pattern or whatever and it doesn't work. We don't pay any attention to that. And a couple of times that I want to do something and I end up doing it, all my attention goes there. Because I like the ego, the mind likes to claim that it was me, I did it. I'm the creator of the universe. I'm the one who writes the script of my life. I create my own life. And this is where the problem is. The sense of separation. And when I'm speaking about awakening, that everyone's so attracted to those who are awakened, the ones who came to full self-realization, God-realizations, they all realized that they're not separated from the source. They all realized that they are the expression of God. They are the expressions of the Absolute. It is the Absolute which is operating through them. And they started to realize that. And in that realization, what happens is the mind becomes quiet or pre that re realization because you have to get away from the world of the mind this is the world of the mind this is the web of the mind the mind has created this world what you're seeing and if it's a nightmare for you is what has been created through not your specific mind okay it's the collective mind has created this so that's why in so many of my previous workshops and my retreats and programs and in my newly made life training program, that's why and at the academy, when you do come to the academy with me, I spend so much time and I put so much emphasis on silence. We work on that. We keep talking about be quiet. Be quiet. Be quiet. Learn how to be silent. Let's go beyond the mind. Bypassing the thinking mind, because it's the thinking mind that has created this world. And you are a separated individual entity in it, and you're really frightened because you're so helpless. Naturally. The world is too big and too hostile. And you're frightened from it because you're helpless in it. As much as you think you can do something, there's nothing you can do about it. It's too big. Too powerful. Too frightening. So you always live in fear and anxiety. And you're always in this place of supporting and protecting yourself against this monster, this giant. Because it's created by the world 
of the mind, the creative mind has created this thing. But as you begin to recognize and realize that there is no separation, that means you need to become quiet. You go beyond the mind, it's a journey from the head to the heart, and you're becoming quiet. You're becoming centered. In that, you kind of become passive and you become non-reactive. You're not reacting to the world. You're not reacting to your partner. You're not reacting to your children. You're not reacting to that policeman that pulled you over and wants to give you a ticket. You're just kind of sinking in here. You're quiet. You're centered. I'm not talking about the type of passive... I'm not talking about being passive in a way that if somebody is trying to force themselves on you, rape you, or uh, violate you, and you're not sitting there, you're sitting there and you let them do it. I'm not talking about that. Girls, you did it when you were 13, 14, 15, when you didn't know anything better. And that has happened to you, unfortunately. I'm not talking about that passiv passivity. Don't take me wrong. Those are moments that you need to react and kick, kick the butt of that person, or punch them in their face. I'm talking about in general, you become quiet, you go inwards, you're bringing your attention to which is that which is here. And you're going beyond the, the world of the mind into the silence. So, as you go beyond the world of the mind, everything becomes more quiet and more quiet. And you're centering yourself. You have bypassed the mind and you have entered into the world of the heart. And as you have gone through this transformation and come to the heart, the presence, the big kahuna, her Majesty, the Supreme Being, begins to reveal itself to you. It shows itself to you. God begins to show Her presence to you and take over your life. And you begin to feel this force field of love, of presence, this power begin to take over. And you feel like you're being showered by love and wisdom. And a new way of knowing will take over. See, I can't really explain these things to you if you're too much in your head. You don't understand what I'm talking about. So it's not really explainable. I can only refer to it. Your analytical mind doesn't understand it. But you have to give it a try because you don't really have a choice. The world you're in is going downhill. So you need to pop out of it. Press the eject button if you can. So you don't go down the hill with that one. So the more you go beyond your mind, the more you sink into your heart, the more you come into the presence here. The more you begin to feel, because it reveals itself to you. And you're surrendering to what is. You're not trying to manipulate things. You're not trying to make things happen to go your way. Because you don't care. You're starting to realize that you're 100% taken care of. All is very well. Everything that you need will come to you. That you need, don't need to figure everything out. You don't need to be on top of everything all the time. 
you relax into your natural state of being. Hanging out here with this one. The presence begin to reveal itself stronger and stronger. And you dive into and you're becoming one with it. And then you realize that this one is operating through you. This is the one who does the healing. This is the one who speaks through me. This is the one who paints, who writes, who drives. This is the one who makes the decisions. How many times, those of you who've been with me in my healing training programs, I never ever said that I can heal anybody. And we have seen miracles happen. Many, many different miracles happen. People with some serious stuff got healed. It was always the language is, I'm not the one who's doing it. I'm not the one who heals anybody. It's that which heals. Why? Because in this recognition, in this place of letting go of an individual illusory entity is the one, the self, Her Majesty, begin to operate. And that's the one who does the healing. So you begin to see it's taking care, taking over, it's doing the work perfectly flawlessly is operating to you. And this idea of you being separated starts to disappear. And you start to feel the presence everywhere. And yes, you're seeing other people. You're seeing other stuff hostile people, dangerous people, things starts to appear and disappear. And yeah, if danger is coming, you duck, you get out of the way. But you don't see it any longer outside of yourself. You start to see it as a part of yourself. Dangerous, evil people become a part of yourself and good people and good things as well. Everything is a part of you. Everything is an expression of the oneness. And as you recognize this, you evolve into this place going beyond the good and bad. You start dropping your ideas of good and bad. And you give your chance, yourself a chance to rise above it into the oneness, from good and bad into the oneness. And as your mind becomes quiet, as you're going beyond the mind, your vibrations begin to rise. You're vibrating in a higher frequency because you have bypassed your thinking mind. You're no longer stuck there. You're no longer in that realm. And that's why they call it self-realization, self-awakening. Awakening to what? Realizing what? Awakening to that which you are not an individual entity separated from the source. That you are the source and you are the oneness. Therefore, 
if you're the oneness, no harm can come to you because that is a part of the oneness. Think in that. Let's just kind of take what we talked about. Just sink in that. Just stay with it. And feel. You can even physically put your hands here and bring them close, close to your heart. Before you touch, kind of feel like as you have your hands this way, you're coming up close. You can feel the force field. There is an energy field around you. You can call it the aura. You can call it your heart or the presence. Feel this. And as you're here in this center of yourself, the transmission will begin to take place you begin to feel the Divine Presence. Let God take over your, your, your life. Drop your resistance. You have nothing to lose. Don't be afraid. You're not alone. You don't need to feel overwhelmed that you have to do this by yourself. That which brought you to this planet, that which gave you life, is responsible for your well-being. Surrender to that. 
let go of your ideas. God is in control of everything, of the pandemic, of the social issues, of the economic collapse, of your well-being, of your love affairs, of your finances, of your children, of your health. The force of love takes care of everything. And we learn accordingly as the expressions of the Absolute. We are in very good hands. We don't recognize it because we don't feel the presence of God in our every moment lives. But the more you start to experience that, the more you let go, the more gratitude and joy and bliss takes over our lives. No matter what's going on on the outside world, Don't get distracted by the outside world. Don't let the outside world scare you. Bring your attention to this place. Hang out with this guy. Hang out with this, this one. This is where the juice is. This is where the power is. Bring your attention to this one. Her Majesty, the Supreme Being. She's operating within you, all over you, surrounding you. This is all you need. That's it. Bring your attention here, this way. And everything you need will come to you. It will literally come to you. And everything you need will come and knock on your door and will be presented to you. You don't worry about it. You just hang out with this one. You go beyond your mind and you sink into the presence. And you feel the love of God and the presence. And your connection gets stronger and stronger.
practice being quiet. Invite silence to your life. The more you're quiet, the more you become in touch with your heart. The more you come to your power, get away from the noise, all this blah, 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 get away from it. That's representing the busy mind. That's what it does. The noise, the news, the blah, blah, blah. People who talk too much. Sound frequency that's disturbing. All of it is designed to activate your mind. Food which is disturbing, they're activating your mind. Spend time by yourself in the nature <clears throat> Spend your time at the company of the wise, those who emanate silence, those who transmit love, if you're going to hang out with people. You're going to spend time with other people. Seek the company of the wise, the lovers of silence, the ones who operate from their heart, those who are not involved with the world, view the world as a manifestation of one busy, chaotic mind. Look at it that way. Change, change the way you're looking at things and look at the world that you're perceiving as a manifestation of a chaotic mind, as a sick mind, as a diseased mind and avoid it. Get away from that. If you want freedom, nothing good is going to come out of it. It's fascinating. There's a lot of wonders in it. Take the best out of it, but don't be focused on it. And don't try to fix it. Don't get passionate about it because it's not even real. Don't get all gone ho about saving something which is not real. It's all made out of thoughts. That's why the world doesn't stay the same. It's always changing from one thing to another. It's always in a state of flux. Look Seek that which does not change and bring your attention to that. What's not changing? What is constant? What is it that has no ups and downs? What is it that is always the same, constantly, continuously, whether you're awake or you're asleep? Bring your attention in that direction because that which doesn't change is the only thing which is real. Anything that is changing is not real. It's unreal. That's why it's changing. Including your thoughts, including your emotions, and including your body. They're changing. They're not staying still. 
So if you bring your attention on that which is changing, you're bound to suffer because you want to keep it the way it is and it doesn't stay, it does not sustain itself permanently. It's always changing from one thing to another. So it brings suffering, relationships, the world, money, health, whatever there is, it's all changing because none of them are real. So seek within yourself that which is real, that which always remain the same. And then you see you don't get disappointed. And the more your attention goes towards that which remains the same, that which doesn't change, the more you begin to see that which changes is not real. So you're less invested in it. And then you start to see you're becoming free from it. You're not taking it seriously any longer. And you begin to feel becoming free. There's only one thing that doesn't change. And that's the real you. The watcher, the observer, the one which is here and is watching. I'm not talking about your thoughts and I'm not talking about your emotions. I'm talking about that which is aware of your thoughts, that which is aware of your emotions, that which is aware of your body, that which is aware of the world, that awareness that is always aware, that is one thing doesn't change. The state of the Atma, the Atma, the Self, the Presence, You bring your attention in that direction and you keep your focus on that one. And then you realize that you are free. That's not subject to change. It's always steady and it's always still. From there you can see changes. From that place you can see your emotions rising and falling. Your thoughts come and go. Your body is changing. So something here is observing that. But t tomorrow I will get more into it and I give you tools and explanations, how it works and what you can do. Okay, so I'm going to answer a couple of questions. We have about 15 minutes left. Uh, one of our friends brought it up to my attention. Hi dear, my mom just died some days ago. Do you have any comments on death and how to deal with death, grief and sorrow? Well, A is my condolences to you and your family. Um, loss of mo mother is really tough, I understand that. Um, a lot of us are very connected to our moms, of course. Uh, she gave us birth. Um, I would embrace the grief, I would embrace the pain, and I would dive into it without trying to avoid it. And just really feel it. Everything that comes, allow it to be. And there's nothing wrong with being sad. There's nothing wrong with griefing. It's a beautiful, 
vulnerable state that you enter into, that you become so raw. If you feel it, if you feel like crying, go for it. And feel it. Don't try to numb yourself. Just experience this. Experience what is going on. And in that, what happens is when you're fully available with all your emotions, all the feelings that arise in you, and you're not resisting them, you're not forcing them, you're, you're accepting it, you're surrendering to what is, is what happens is that you begin to feel the presence of your mother here. And in fact, she has moved into your heart I feel my sister, my dad, and my best friend very strongly, sometimes every day. I feel the presence here. So they move into your heart and they're with you eternally. Of course, we miss their physical presence, naturally, because we're human beings. We're not machines. As society is trying to turn us into becoming machines. So it's natural to miss the presence of someone you love. But you can't lose them because they move into your heart. And you feel their presence very strongly. And you feel closer to them than ever before. And just go through the process. Don't try to alter the process or numb yourself so you don't feel what is going on. Just allow the feelings to come. Feel them, 100%. And also know that this too will pass like everything else. There's a lot of fire right now and it's really burning and this will pass. Because you are in this place of being in the observer. So there's fire happening right now in you, but you're the awareness of it. You're aware that there's fire happening in you right now. But your awareness doesn't get less or more. It doesn't affect the awareness. It doesn't affect the witness. The witness remain the witness. The awareness remain the awareness. Yet, the emotions are very much affected by the fire. For some of us who are very connected to our mothers, it's a very, very strong transition. But embrace that and just stay with it and just allow the feelings to come. That's my suggestion. Okay, let's see what we have. Okay, um, there's another one. Hi, I have a problem on the fact that we don't have free will. Coming from... All right, so Kim, where are you? Let me unmute you and you can just... There you are. Hi, Kim. Hi. 
Hi, Kim. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, are you in Sedona or that's just a picture behind you? <laughs> I want to be in Sedona. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my eyes. I'm kind of... <laughs> okay, so go for it. We don't have a lot of time, so... Well, coming from a metaphysical background uh, in feng shui and Chinese astrology, which I do, is a 5,000 year teaching. We always been taught this three really cosmic trinity, and each of them represent one third of our luck. That is heaven, which is based on our birth chart, the time and place we're born. The other one is earth, which is your feng shui, your environment, and your place and where you sleep and work. And the last is man, which is the last one third, which represents free will. And free will meaning that it's our karma, how we treat others, how we're willing to self-empower, go to college, um, you know, decision that we make. I, you know, I thought there was always a one third of free will. Okay, I'm listening. I'm here with you. Okay. And that's the, that is my dilemma in when you say there is no free will. And I understand that we are guided and we get ideas and inspiration from God, from source, okay? Mm hmm right. So, can you <laughs> eliminate that one third of free will that I'm <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this is gonna be a long discussion. I'm just gonna give you a short answer right now and we can talk about it tomorrow because we're almost out of time. Okay. okay, so <clears throat> the, the reason I say there is no free will is because there is no individual entity separated from the oneness. So if you're going to have your own free will, that means you have to be separated from everything else in order to have your own autonomy. But that's not true because there is no separation, it's all that. So the oneness operates through each and every one of us because we're not separated from the life. It's life that exists through us. And now with saying this, this answer, there's going to be a hundred more questions coming out. So, Tomorrow, why don't you bring it up and then we get into it in details. How's that? And then I'll answer your questions. Is that fair enough? It's fair. That is beautiful. By the way, I appreciate you providing this uh, platform and space for this community. And I've, I've always been attracted to your presence. I had a chance to take two of your workshops at the Conscious Life Expo in February and I invited some of my friends, and I really appreciate your work in providing this space in the weekly academy on Wednesday. And I try to spread the words and, and get all the information out there to whoever that resonate with. And, um, and it's, it's a blessing to get to know you. Thank you. Well, likewise. Thank you. I appreciate your love and support. I feel it in my heart. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're a wonderful being. And uh, I, I read your comments, so I, I hear you. I don't always respond back, but I do get your messages, so I'm very grateful. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so we're getting close to the end of our um, event. Uh, if you feel compelled and you feel like you're touched and this... Um, workshop is going to be helping other people uh, go ahead and share the link uh, with your friends and family so we can spread the message and help as many people as we can um, we're going to resume tomorrow uh, Sunday at 9.30 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time so feel free to write to us if you want to. My email is 
info at zarathustra.tv. My website is zarathustra.tv. Um, you can browse through. We always make changes. We have recently made some new products under in the pro product sections. Um, if there is any flaws or anything you find, please write it write, write it to me. Uh, if you have any suggestions, we're always open to suggestions and making improvements. We're learning as we go. Uh, we're a small entity. This is not a huge uh, uh, corporation or a company. Uh, this is small and we appreciate your donations, your help, your love and support. There's a donation button in my website. If you feel like you want to help the cause, go ahead and uh, express your heart in that way. Otherwise, just write to us and send us your messages. We very much appreciate your input. Those of you who I wasn't able to answer questions, uh, I'll get into your questions tomorrow. Bring them up to me. Uh, send you my love, stay in your heart, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Namaste.